very good morning. So myself, Dr. Ravi Kumar Kolyoyo, working as assistant professor in the department of information technology. So today we are going to discuss about the improving software economics. So as we know that to how we are going to calculate the, the software economics. So we have the formula effort is equal to personal into environment into the quality into size power of the process. So these are the five uh, parameters which are going to calculate the estimation of the software. So here in this topic we are going to discuss about how we are going to improve the software economics. So the five basic parameters of the software cost models such as the first one is size. So we need to reduce the size or we need to uh, uh, reduce the complexity of the what we are going to develop the software. And next one is improving the development process. The process we need to check that we need to verify that whether the process should be a less than one or should be a greater than one. So if you are using the human generated uh, coding, so we need to minimize. So it should be less than one. So when the process is less than one, so that it will be an economy of scale. Okay. So here we need to use the economy of scale. Here, okay. When it is a less than one, when the process is greater than one, then it is an a diseconomy of a scale. So we need to check that whether it is a less than one or greater than one here. So that to improve the development of the process. So next one is uh, personal. So this personal is more skilled and better teams here. And the next one is uh, using the better environments. So here the environments is nothing but here. We need to use the uh, in detail about the, the techniques and the tools for the automated process. The last parameter is the quality. So we should not compromise uh, about the quality. The quality should be high quality while you are doing the software or the projects. So that's why the trading off or backing off on quality threshold. So that we need to set some threshold to improve the quality of the software. So these are the main five parameters to estimate the software cost estimation here. Okay. So here we have the trends uh, for improving the software economics. So we have the five different types of the parameters are there. So the first one is here we are going to use the size. Okay. The size is the first parameter. So then we are going to consider as the cost model parameters as the abstraction and the component based development technologies. Okay. So here what are the different types of the technology and the languages we are going to use here? So mainly we are going to implement as higher order languages such as C++, Ada 95, Java, Visual Basic, Ada 83. And we need to compare the C and C++. So this high order languages is mainly useful to minimize or to reduce the size of the software. And the next one is object oriented. So there we need to use the uh, rational rules or EML to analysis the design and the programming for the reuse of the uh, uh, size of the software. And the next one is we need to implement the commercial components. So to minimize the size of the software, mainly we need to check that what are the higher order languages and object oriented such as the EML diagrams to analyze, to generate the uh, automatic code here and reuse of the software. And finally, we need to use the commercial components. The next parameter is the process. So in the process, uh, here we have the methods and techniques. So there we can use the process for the iterative development and the process maturity models and architecture first development and acquisition reform. So to improve the uh, process mainly we need to use the different types of the iterative development and we need to check that what is the maturity of the different types of the process and uh, verify uh, verifying of the architecture and acquisition of the different types of the process of the components here. The next one is the personal. So personal is nothing but mainly it will be affecting the people factors. 
so we need to hate the good persons so while you are recruiting in the company or the organization so mainly the team leaders and the project manager need to hire good people so that they need they need to give the training and personal skill development and teamwork is a very important for the organization to do the task in a stipulated time and uh, to complete the project within the budget and win win culture so there should not be any egoistic uh, between any team members so uh, whatever the task they are going to assign so they should be completed without any having ego so that so it will be very helpful for the organization and to build the uh, teamwork and finally they will be achieving win win cultures in the organization the next one is environment so in the environment so mainly we are going to use the automation technology and the trends so nowadays so mainly so with the less effort of the human coding generated so 70% uh, automation technology will be happen so it means uh, by using the uh, uh, pictures or the diagrams it will be generating the code here so that we need to use the integrated tools such as visual modeling and compilers editor debugger change management etc and we need to verify about the different types of the open systems and hardware platform performance we need to upgrade the new hardware and to implement uh, to support these generations of the hardware as well as the software and providing the automation of the coding documents testing and analysis the next one is the quality so quality is the main criteria in the uh, implement of the software so there we need to check that the performance reliability and accuracy so here mainly we need to check that the hardware platform performance and the demon demonstrations based assessment and statistical quality control so these are the five parameters which we are going to use for the cost model parameters in the improving the software economics so here in the if you are checking that the two decades ago so mainly the teams are mainly working with the help of the user interface they are going to spend lot of time so that uh, they are going to analyze the different types of the operations and checking the various uh, criteria of the humans and sprint layouts and the sprint dynamics so that uh, they having the more time for analyzing these things so all these would, would be done on uh, because it will be very extremely expensive because it is mainly uh, done with the help of the paperwork only so it will take more time for the uh, committee des uh, designs even informal prototypes and executable code so that's why nowadays we are having the so lightweight process so instead of the heavy weight sets you so that's why we are using the, the process the process should be we need to check that whether it is a heavy weight or the light weight so when you are taking the fairly heavy weight set of layer paper it means they need to analyze the different types of the criteria so that uh, what are the requirements and those requirements whether it is frozen and having the high construction cost so they need to check that each and every uh, criteria constraints so the process will be having very heavy weight so that's why they are getting the this economy so it means the process having the lot of uh, high value so we need to minimize so that's why in the components mainly uh, with the help of the automations this process has become very lightweight sector and mainly they are using the graphical user interface so it is a very good example for the tools for using the new technology and for the different types of the process so by using this gi so mainly it will be very helpful for the conventional user interface yeah. process so that to overcome the different types of the hurdles which are occurred during the uh, process and mainly this gui builder tools permitted engineering uh, teams to construct an executable user interface fast so mainly with the help of this gui builder so it will be the interface will be having very for a faster performance and within the very less cost only they are going to develop here okay so the another factor here is mainly they are going to check that the software technology improvements 
across the board is the mainly ever increasing advances in the hardware performance so mainly they, uh, they need to verify about the hard, hardware performance and they need to check that whether it will be supporting the software so that here the availability so availability is the main criteria for the process so they are going to check that the more pro, uh, more cycles and more memory and having the more bandwidth so they need to eliminate all the unnecessary uh, like memory and the more bandwidth to eliminate so that the complexity will be minimized here so that's why maybe they are using the brute force solutions so this brute force solution is very important so it means it will be checking the all possibilities of the solutions so when you are using the brute force solutions it will be going to verify about the what are the main possibility to overcome uh, to minimize this process and having uh, how they are going to uh, improve the hardware improvements so that whether they need to use the advanced technologies for the softwares to do the different types of the instances okay so the most significant, uh, significant way to improve affordability and return on investment is mainly we need to check that minimum amount of human generated source material so this is the main criteria to reducing the software product size here it means there is a less intervention of the human generated code so instead of having the in detail from uh, starting to the ending stage so nowadays we have the components which will be using the automated uh, generation of the coding as well as the interfaces to minimize this complications so mainly the organizations will be going to verify about the affordability and return uh, return on investment so that they, they need to gain the more profit by they are going to achieving the desired goals and the next one is here the component based development so here this will be mainly used to minimize the source language size here so when we are using the more 70% of the component so here nowadays mainly we are going to use the 70% of component based development is used so that the size will be reduced here for the software solutions and uh, here the ultimate goal for minimizing the software is we need to use the reuse reuse of the software or reuse the code and object oriented technology and automatic code productions and higher order programming languages these are the main constraints to minimize the uh, re uh, reduction of the software product size here and very less intervention of the human specified source here so these are the main criteria to minimize the uh, reduction of the uh, software product size here so the primary motivation is we need to use the higher order languages so higher order languages such as c++ c ada 95 ada 83 java visual basic and fourth generation languages and next one is automatic code generations so here automatic code generations we have the different types of the uh, tools are there so the first one they are using the case tools so when you draw this so it will be generating so there we can use the forward as well as the reverse engineering it means it will be generating the automatic code or from the code it will be generating the uh, pictorial format so and we can use the visual modeling tools and GUI builders. The next one is reuse of commercial components. It means we need to use the different types of the operating system and Windows environment and database management system, middleware and networks. And the last one is here object oriented technologies like unified modeling language, visual modeling tools, and architecture frameworks. So by using these object oriented and higher order languages and uh, automatic code gen uh, generators and reuse of commercial components will be minimizing the size of the software product so when you are minimizing the size uh, reduction technologies so it will be reducing the human generated source line so there we can minimize the sloc of the human so when you are minimizing this sloc of the human so that it will be highly uh, impact of the uh, reduction of the size so it will be increase the amount of computer 
processable, executable code. So there we can use the automatic uh, tools to generate the high uh, source line of code here. So when you are taking the immature size reduction technology, so they may be reduce the development size. So we need to verify about the investment and check the necessary uh, levels of the quality and the performance. So when you depend on the more automatic code generators, they may be impact of the quality and the performance. So these are the main uh, impacting of the project performance. So they, they may be having the advantages as well as the disadvantages. So when you are mainly depends upon the uh, online tools, so the quality and the performance we need to keep in the mind for the reduction of the size so that it will be mainly impact the overall project performance. Okay, so here first we'll see the uh, high, higher order languages. So in high, higher order languages, mainly we are going to use the universal functional points. In the universal functional points, so there we are using the language independent and early life cycle estimators. So these are the main uh, useful things we are going to implement in the higher order languages. So when you are using these higher, higher order functional points, so we have the different types of the function points for the external user inputs or external outputs and internal logical data groups and external data interfaces and external inquiries. So these are the main uh, constraints they are going to use for the estimators for the language independent. So as well as we have the a source line of code metrics are mainly used for the estimators for software after a candid solution is formulated. So there we need to check that what is the SLOC of the software project. So based upon that we need to check that what is the implementation language. So they are going to use whether it is a higher order language such as the C, C++, Java, ADA 95 or ADA 83, Photon. So like that we, we have the different types of the higher order languages. So in this table we can see that we have the different types of the languages and number of source lines per uh, UFP. So the first one is when you are considering the assembly language. So where the assembly language is taking the 320 source line of code and the C programming is consisting of 128 SLOC. Whereas uh, Fortran 77 is consisting of 105 SLOC. So COBOL 85 is consisting of 91 and ADA 83 is consisting of 71 and whereas C++. So from here onwards we can check that uh, the object oriented is implemented uh, from the ADA 83 onwards. The reduction of the source is uh, reduced. So here in C++ they, uh, it is using only 56 and ADA 95 it is using 55, Java 55, Whereas Visual Basic, it will be using only 35. So here, mainly we need to use that uh, reduction of the source line of code here. So among these, from ADA 83 onwards, so the source line of code is minimized. So that's why mainly we are going to uh, implementing this uh, from the ADA 83 onwards. Okay. So here, C++, ADA 95, ADA 83. Java and Visual Basics. So compared this, we need to verify about the comparison between. So what is the main difference between ADA 83 and ADA 95, C and C++ and Java and Visual Basics. So it will be uh, expressing the level of ex, uh, expressibility. So whereas it will be minimizing the source line of code here. So that here this data can be uh, having the uh, numerous possible misuses. So we need to verify about the mainly difference between the different types of the programming languages. So Visual Basics is very expressive because so here the Visual Basics is using only the 35 source line uh, line of code here. So that's why it is very expressive and powerful in building simple interactive applications. So that uh, but uh, the main choice is that it is not implemented for the real time and embedded and OLX programming like that. So, but it is very powerful tool which will be minimizing the code here. So, whereas we, if you are comparing the uh, ADA 95 and ADA 83, so ADA 95 might be the best language for a catastrophic cost of failure system that controls a nuclear power plant. It means it will be 
checking that what is the source line of the code and it will give the indication of the whether if any failure is occurred during uh, in the nuclear uh, power plant so that will be checking that what is the uh, hi highly parallel and scientific and number crunching programming running on a super computer okay so the interest of the department of defense so in developing the uh, ada 83 so there we have seen that ada 83 and ada and ada 95 so here the main difference between ada 83 and ada 95 is the source line of code whereas in ada 83 it is having the 71 whereas ADA 95 it is consisting only 55 lines. So this ADA 83 is mainly uh, implemented in the uh, Department of Defense uh, was uh, due in part so due in part to the uh, increase in would provide in a expressive okay a significant economic motivation uh, was the ability to develop a program in substantially fewer line of code than were required in the traditional language. So we need to check that uh, alternatives of the photon, cobalt, C and assembly programming language. So here this as uh, photon, cobalt, C and assembly languages, um, we need to check that how many lines of codes are going to implement it here. Okay. So here uh, the main we need to check that the difference between the ADA 83 and ADA 95 the features we need to support the object oriented programming language. So when you compare this ADA 83 and ADA 95, the first order estimation of the value of object oriented program that allows. So it means uh, we can return only the 30% pure source line. So the main difference between ADA 83 and ADA 95, so that we can minimize the 30% of the pure source, uh, source lines here. So that uh, ADA 95 is the best choice compared to the ADA uh, 83 here. So here, like that we need to verify about the difference between the C and C++ programming. So it is an, a uh, subset. So we, we, we know that C++ is having the advanced uh, within the uh, ADA as well as the advanced support for the object oriented programming language. So whereas the C++ was developed to support the C, as a subset here. So here we have the C compatible is very easy. So C programming is very easy, but they are not using any object oriented uh, concepts here. So it will be, uh, I mean, uh, the programs what you are using in the C can be tra uh, transitioned to the C++. And the evolution of the Java has eliminated many of the problems. So what are the problems are faced in the C++ uh, programming language? It will be overcome by the Java language so that in Java programming language this object oriented features and adding further supports for portability and distributions will be happen. So the portability is nothing but here when you are taking the uh, this programming language can be run in the different types of the compilers or different types of the operating system the output is similar or maybe slightly modification. So this is what you can call as the portability. So for example, if you are considering the source line of code of the different types of the programming language. So whereas in the assembly uh, language, it is consisting of 1 million, that is 10 lakhs lines, uh, lines of assembly language. So whereas in C programming, so it is consisting of 4 lakhs line of code. So in ADA 83, it is consisting of 2 lakhs 20,000. Uh, and in the other 95 or C++, it is using the 1,75,000. So see the main, uh, the difference between the assembly uh, programming language and C, C++ and other 83 and other 95 or C++. The code minimized is dramatically changed here. So whereas if you are using the commercial components and automatic code generators such as the case tools, and GUI builders can further reduce the size uh, size of human generated source code here. So which in turn reduce the size of the team and time needed for development. So when you are using the automatic uh, code generators, so it will be minimizing the, the size as well as the time here. So when you are extending the commercial database management system and commercial GUI builders 
and commercial middleware so that to minimize the effectiveness of the software product size. So we have the 75,000 of lines of ADA 95 or C++ integration of several commercial components. So when you are using these commercial components with the ADA 95 or the C++, the lines of code is uh, varied from well, like 75,000 to 75,000. So here we have the major difference between the large and small projects as a greater than linear impact on life cycle cost. So we need to check that what are the different types of the higher high programming language and what are the commercial components we need to use here. It will be mainly impact on the cost so that we need to check that which is the best one and simple so to minimize this size so that here reducing size usually increase understandability. So understandability is nothing but so the it will be clearly understood so that uh, clearly understood of the uh, software as well as the changeability according to the changes or the modifications will be happened and the reliability so the software should not be not having any uh, issues or the gaps during development or the after releasing the product so this will be mainly impact when you are reducing the size such as the understandability changeability and the reliability so not only the advantages the main disadvantage is higher level abstraction technologies so there it will be degrading the performance so when you are uh, using the these concepts when you are minimizing the uh, software product size so it will be impacting the performance and increasing the consumption of resources so we need to use the more number of uh, resources such as the cycles the memories and the different types of the bandwidths the communication bandwidths will be changes from low to high low, high to low like that so here the performance will be degraded so that is the main drawback so to overcome these drawbacks so we need to use the hardware performance so we need to check that what is the latest uh, hardware uh, technology we are going to improve to optimize these drawbacks so that we need to uh, clearly improve the effectiveness of the embedded platforms for the uh, minimizing the software size. And the next one is we have the object oriented methods and visual modeling. So in this object oriented model, the main problem and the solutions will be having the end users of a systems. And we need to check that the developers which are sharing the understanding of the problem. So when they are sharing the problem, so that it will be clearly uh, minimizing the uh, program and it will be resolved. So the best example for this one is, so implements in the teamwork. So when any task is uh, done by the team members, it will be minimizing the errors. So that they, they, they may be having the interpersonal communications. So they may be improving the interpersonal communications. Also. The next one is the use of continuous integration creates opportunities to recognize risk early and make incremental corrections without destabilizing the entire development effort. It means we need to check that each and every uh, defects in a early stage. So what are the gaps will be happen in a, each and every phase. So we need to identify uh, by conducting the review meetings so that uh, the experts will be giving the incremental corrections. It means they are going to give the suggestions to improve the de uh, development of the software so that if you are uh, identifying the errors after the development efforts, so the cost will be high and the time schedule each and everything will be uh, will be highly impacted to the software project. So that's why in initial stage only we need to identify the risk and to improve the different types of the corrections in the incremental model. So that it will be very helpful for the, uh, it will be having by using the object oriented technology such as the architecture first process. So we need to check that what are the different types of the components. We need to implement the architecture or in the design part and in the integration is very early and the continuously life cycle activity. So that we need to check that the different types of the uh, object oriented concepts here and we have the object oriented architecture provides a clear separations of the concerns among dis, uh, disparate elements of a 
system. So then we need to check that the create the firewalls that uh, prevents a change in one part of the system from rendering the fabrics of the entire architecture. So the best example of the futures is to support the different types of the programming language and the environments available to implement this object oriented architecture. So here the booch is uh, explained uh, five characteristics of the successful object oriented projects. So the first one is a ruthless focus on the development of a system that provides a well understood collection of essential minimum characteristics. So that we need to check that the what are the we need to focus on the development of a system and what are the main characters and the collections of a different types of the requirements. And we need to check that existence of a culture it means it will be impact of the results and encourages of the communications and not afraid to fail. So we need to verify about the results. We should not worry about the failure. So here uh, the third point is effective use of object oriented modeling. So while you are using this object oriented modeling, so we can minimize the code here and existence of the strong architectural design. So the design part is should be very strong here and the application of a well managed iterative and incremental development life cycle should be implemented in the object oriented project so that it will be highly impacted of the uh, reduction of the software product size here. And the next one is we have reuse. So reuse is the main important criteria to minimize the software product size here. So reusing existing components and building reusable components have been natural software engineering. It means so when you are using the existing components and reusable of the components so we can minimize the software code here so that it will be improved improve the programming languages. And software design methods have always deal with the reuse in order to minimize the development cost. So when you reduce the size of the product then the cost also will be minimized here so that the main uh, uh, it will be impacting the performance, the feature set and the quality. So when you are using the uh, reusability of the concepts, it will be highly uh, having the features such as the performance, feature set and the quality. So reuse achieves the undeserved importance within the software engineering community. It means so we, do, we don't need and as well as we should. So mainly we need to check that what are the uh, different types of the components of the uh, uh, building the reusable components we need to use in the object oriented concepts. Okay, so here mainly when you are using the reusable components, the commercial components have been supported these characteristics. So here we have the in this diagram, uh, we can see here we have the x axis as the number of projects using the reusable components, whereas y axis it will be using the development cost and scheduled resources. So when you are using the first project, so there we can assign the uh, dollar n as a cost and an estimation estimation of the m months. So here we are having the schedule as well as the time. So if you are using the one project, we can use the efficient of the for the single project. So when you go for the second project, then it will take the fifty percent more cost. So simultaneously when you are going to consider the uh, more than one project and the cost will be high 50% more cost and 100% more time. So likewise if you are taking the uh, five project solutions then 125 percentage more cost and 158% of more time. So it will take more time when the project solutions will be improved here. So many project solutions so it means it will be having the high value for uh, unit investment. So it means the commercial products as well as the different types of the economics will be improved here. So they have an economic motivation for continued support and we are going to improve the product quality and adding the new features and transitioning to a new technology. So when you are incorporated this new technology, so it will be very uh, simplified to adding the new features and improving the quality here and having the sufficiently broad customers base to be profitable so that it will be gain more return of investment. Okay, So here we have the commercial components 
in the commercial comrades when you are taking the uh, different types of the the tools and the technologies what you have implemented here so they they have they have the advantages as well as the disadvantages the first approach is commercial components these commercial components having the advantages such as predictable license cost so when you are considering the commercial components so mainly we need to take the predictable cost here okay the cost we can predict the what is the cost of the software and broadly we can use the mature technology and the availability of the software and the commercial components and what is the dedicated software organization and hardware or software independency and rich in the functionality so these are the main advantages when you are using the commercial components so the main disadvantage is so when you are purchasing any software license or the components so mainly what you have to do means so frequently we need to upgrades so if you are purchasing any software mainly we need to do the frequent upgrades and sometimes we need to pay the upfront license fee and the maintenance fee also we need to maintain so it means every time we need to pay for the license amount and we need to uh, pay the maintenance fee so the cost will be doubled so maintenance fees will be it will be doubled here and dependency on the vendor so when they are going to release the patches of the uh, upgradations of the softwares and we need to check that runtime efficiency sacrifice and the functionality constraints and whether it is having the integration so we need to check that no control over upgrades and the maintenance unnecessary features that consume extra resources so if you don't want some resources so some features then it will be consuming the more resources so that is the main uh, disadvantage is here and often inadequate reliability and the stability so here we have the inadequate reliability and the stability of the software when you are using the commercial components here and multiple vendor incompatibilities so these are the main drawbacks which will be when you are using the commercial components so when you are using the custom development the main advantage is so complete change freedom so it means we can have the more uh, what we can choose what are the components we are going to select here and smaller often simpler implementations so what are the main components we are using that components we are going to use for the software uh, software of the projects and control of development and enhancement so that it will be giving the better performance when you are minimizing the custom development but here the main disadvantage is it is very expensive and unpredictable development so when you are taking the custom development so here the cost is very higher and we cannot predict that what is the availability date also and the maintenance of the different types of the models we cannot define that and they may be having the fragile and the immature so it will be depends upon the single platform only so there is no multiple or cross platform dependency and it will be drain on the export resources so these are the main commercial components uh, we have the two different types of the commercial component components such as so there are advantages are there as well as the disadvantages are there so these are the main uh, things to reduce the software product size here. so these are the uh, references so i have referred this topic from the software project management so by marker rose talking tradition like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates